According to Public Service and Gender Ministry, between January and March 2021, the ministry recorded 877 cases of gender-based violence with a high prevalence in Nairobi, Kakamega, Kisumu, Nakuru, and Kiambu counties. The cabinet secretary, Margaret Kobia, raised the alarm over the GBV cases in Kenya that have continued to spiral during the COVID-19 pandemic. Data from the ministry indicates that in 2020, between January and December, there were 5,009 cases reported, an increase of 1,411, equivalent to 36% from the previous years. Findings from a research carried out by the National Crime Research Center established that the number of GBV cases recorded between January and June 2020 had an increase of 92% compared to the year 2019 within the same period. Gender-based violence is a very sensitive and often divisive topic in our country. This forces us to come to terms with the fact that one person could inflict so much pain on another. Former Prime Minister Raila Odinga on a tweet on April 20th says it is unfortunate that after winning their partner's heart, instead of going on to cherish and love them, some suddenly turn physical and at times horrifically end up killing them. Too many lives are being lost and on an almost daily basis going by media reports. This scourge must come to an end. The abnormality of these murders cannot become the normal. No. If you cannot reconcile, then leave and let leave. We need an urgent, candid discussion on gender-based violence as a nation. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Daughters of the Kingdom Special Edition with me, Cynthia Nanjala, as we get down and discuss matters GBV. And my panel for today, I'm joined by Pastor Josephine Chavaseki and our psychologist Anastasia Kihwaga. Thank you very much, ladies, for making time. Right, and before we get into the conversation, I'd like to urge Pastor Josephine to kindly pray for us. Heavenly Father, we thank you so much. You're good and you're loving God. You're God of love. Your love is unconditional. We you send your son Jesus so that everyone can experience this love. And we thank you, God, even for this moment of time, even as we talk about gender-based violence, I know that there's nothing that can be too difficult for you. Even this situation in our country and even in the rest of the world, we just bring it to you, Father. And we pray that, Father, in the name of Jesus, that even as we begin this session, we pray if anyone is watching and they are inflicted with pain, they're in fear, I pray that you send your love, touch them, and heal their wounds in the name of Jesus. And if there's any who is a victim, even right now, Father, we pray for them in the name of Jesus. And we pray that God will touch them. My God, I pray that, I pray that you wrap them with your love. May the grace and the peace of God even flow in their lives. Thank you, Lord, even for this moment and for this space. May you experience your move and the Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Indeed, what better way than to begin the show with the word of prayer? Mm -hmm. Right, and we'll head straight into mm -hmm. it. Um, mm -hmm. A lot of people feel like when you're talking of GBV cases, you're just talking of the sexual harassment and the sexual violence, but it comes in so many different forms. Mm -hmm. um, if you could just take us through the different ways we can, or people can experience this, Anastasia. Thank you very much. My name is Anastasia Kehoga, I'm a counselor psychologist. Uh, I want us to go straight to the topic. And I want to say this, that gender-based violence, number one, is infringing somebody's right. It's going against the right of a, a somebody. And that, that is a simple definition, is whereby either it can be a male, a female, or a, 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 a child, or a young adult, whereby you go against their, their rights. Like, you don't get a consent in terms of sexual harassment. You don't, you, you batter them. And that one takes us now to the, the types of gender-based violence. There are many, but they are the main ones, whereby we have the physical one, whereby you are battered or you're kicked or you have those marks, like somebody has a black eye, I mean, we have seen those. Or somebody has, I mean, you've been hurt, like we saw at some point where a lady was cut her hard. Or sometimes you see men who have been their private parts have been uh, extracted. You know, those are some of the physical violence. That is what we can see with our eyes. It involves kicks. And sometimes people have gone to an extent of even, even killing them. We have the people who killed others. 
and that is that is in the form of physical however the physical one now culminates to psychological because if your heart deeply if somebody has hurt you physically again it has some psychological pain and that is when we we develop another something another form of violence called psychological whereby you're digging it like now you're already a very beautiful lady she's a very beautiful pastor and then somebody has just he, he marked her and she's developing a black eye it it lowers her self esteem her social worth has been compromised her self worth has been compromised uh, unfortunately those are things that we never see but we see the physical you know somebody will take care of you you know i've been hurt you know my leg has been hurt but then do you take care of the inner part of it and that is why we have the psychological part of it that really it's more hurting because it's the deeper deeper thing that hurts most and it can again go and continue to develop post traumatic disorder or you get traumatized and after being traumatized again it comes along with that then you have socio economic that we are living in times whereby like now due to gender identity you know gender based violence is an identity on genders and i said it can be a harassment on both sides it can be a male or a female you, we can't say that even today is even the wife are battering their husband and the husband are battering their wives so the social economic like now i am a woman and maybe i'm married to a man who doesn't want me to have an economic aspect whereby i'm earning my own money or when i take my money to the bank it is him to control you know you have that manipulation type of it whereby you don't have your own light and that one comes along with like now the the social economic it comes along with i mean i want to demean somebody uh, unfortunately it's never seen like a violence it's like it doesn't also happen like it's both genders because these days things have changed long time it was men against women but these days even men women if i'm earning more than my husband i ensure that i bring him down so that can be because of the economic times and covid has brought it very real people have lost job we see men in the house they're not earning and the wife if it's the wife or the the lady who is earning more they try to bring the man down again it affects them that is also a form of violence again we have the social, the cultural aspects of violence whereby like we have for example the female genital mutilation why should it be that it's only a girl who is going subjected to the pain of undergoing the pain of interfering with her womanhood at the expense of a man again that is also violence is it notified most of the time it's just it's a come a call aspect whereby it's a senior marriage but those are the things that brings along those are the types of violence and those are the things that would bring the sexual assaults like somebody like we are getting these days young people they go for a date and then after going for a date it again if if i don't love the man and he feels bad you know the way you feel i don't want to lose this girl i'll ensure i put a mark what do they do they they lap you that is again se- sexual assault or we get in the in the marital status we also get uh, violence in the in the sexual marital because we need to get consent even in a marital status you need to get the consent of a wife unfortunately there is a lot of lipping in the houses in the bedroom because there is no that communication there is no consent no anything that you do without the consent of the other you have infringed their human rights and that way demeaning a person it's a kind of a violence either for the male or the, for the female right mm-hmm. and you know um pastor Josephine you know we this is a conversation that we've had this is not the first time yeah. as a country mm-hmm. so many times and recently there was a cop who you know shot him you know murdered his wife then committed suicide and one can't help but wonder why are we having these cases soaring high as of now what is attributing to all these cases Yeah that's true the, the the issue of gender violence is escalating by the day and uh, a lot of people are doing whatever they can do but i i believe there is so much which is not being addressed i think as community we are addressing the fruit mm-hmm. of evil but not the roots i think this is a time 
when as a society, as a church, and everyone should take responsibility and really begin addressing the issues from the road. Mm -hmm. And as, even as, as I just add some of the, the things that are attributing to this, she just talked a little bit about the harmful, the harmful norms, the harmful gender norms and stereotyping yes. mm -hmm. for a long time. And this is something that really needs to be addressed. For a long time, uh, the, the, the harmful uh, stereotyping and gender issues have brought a lot of volatile and a lot of uh, immunity mm -hmm. between the man and the woman, mm -hmm. the girl and the boy. Mm -hmm. Because even in the different cultures, you find a boy is given preference to go to school, mm -hmm. is given preference to have you know, some privileges more than the girls. Mm -hmm. And um, even up to today, it is still there. And those are things that were there during times of our mothers and our grandmothers. And life now has changed. Life is a com very competitive life. And everyone wants to make it. Mm -hmm. Our young girls, you can see even during the last KCPE mm -hmm. in 2020, the top three were girls. Mm -hmm. They were not lesser than the boys. Mm -hmm. So w we need to really address the issues mm -hmm. that girls and boys, they should be given equal, mm -hmm. yeah. equal space, mm -hmm. equal mm -hmm. opportunities. Mm -hmm. If it's education, they should be given equal opportunities mm -hmm. and equal attention. I was listening to a program for teenagers mm -hmm. just two weeks ago, mm -hmm. and they were just discussing why mm -hmm. things are happening the way they are happening. And they were saying in their families, the, the teenagers were really very open, and I was really happy to learn from them. And they were saying that the families, mm -hmm. their parents, they are also very discriminating. Mm -hmm. You find if a family has five, mm -hmm. two boys and three girls, or vice versa, mm -hmm. the boys are given more attention, and they're given like less work. The girls have to work in the house that there, and all that. So then the the stereotyping still it's still there, mm -hmm. and it, we need to address that mm -hmm. both in the church, in the society, and in all in all areas. Mm -hmm. The other thing is that also she has talked about it the socioeconomic. This time of COVID-19, a lot of people have lost their jobs. Sure. There's a lot of joblessness. There's a lot of, um, there's a lot of pain and frustration. And uh, people think, okay, what can I do? And you find that young girls, even women, and even young men, they are involved in illicit, in illicit sex, illicit work. I mean, people want to make things to work, yeah. like using the wrong, the wrong means. So I think there's a time everyone, the church and the community, should really talk about innovation, creativity, mm -hmm. and even the theology of work. Mm -hmm. Everyone should work and gain good money, mm -hmm. you know. They should work and, and, I mean, have decent lives, but they should not get involved in, in uh, illegal ways to gain. So that is very, very important. Mm -hmm. The issue of anger, there's a lot of anger. What work on Ninja? And looking for food, people are looking for food from anywhere. And some people, they just don't mind. I listened to to a, a talk, a story. It was a, a narrative of a young man who was, who, who was actually a thief. Mm -hmm. And you know, <laughs> being a thief, he's also involved in it is violence and, yeah. I mean, he was interviewed and he was asked how it all began. And he said when he was in high school, mm -hmm. he stole money from somebody, 20,000. And when the mother was called, the mother sided with the young man. Mm -hmm. So that the mother gave this young man the power, like the, you know, like, you can continue. Mm -hmm. Now he's doing much, much mess in the community. But it began from a few years ago, and it was not corrected. So I want to say the issue of socioeconomic. Then maybe, I, as I said, the other thing is mm -hmm. the sexual coercion. Mm -hmm. Things that are attributed to the gender violence. 
I've talked about the gender stereotyping, the socioeconomic, mm -hmm. and the sexual coercion. Mm -hmm. we, we are living in a country which I can say, and I can really say it's like Sodom and Gomorrah, and God is not happy. Mm -hmm. The sexual activities happening in this country, we saw in the media, yeah. I mean, last year and part of this year, mm -hmm. during this COVID-19 mm -hmm. season, over 40,000 mm -hmm. young girls, mm -hmm. you know, getting pregnant, mm -hmm. and uh, a lot of activities, the parties that we've been seeing young people having in the, in the different places, mm -hmm. I mean, the sexual immorality in this country, mm -hmm. it needs to be stopped so that God can also help us. When things start like that, even the gender violence, it yeah. just gets up, and it just rises. So mm -hmm. I think those are some of the things that uh, I can say. And also, again, the gender violence is an attack. It's a demonic thing. Yes. I mean, yeah. as a country, we wouldn't want to get into yeah. that. Mm -hmm. But you see Sodom and Gomorrah, mm -hmm. the people there, they were attacking even the angels mm -hmm. who came to the house of Lot. So that shows when satanic activities are involved, mm -hmm. the escalation also goes up mm -hmm. and up. Right. Yeah, so I think those are some of the things they can say they are attributing. Right. And, you know, Anastasia, yes. um, there's a question on mental health mm -hmm. and our states. Mm -hmm. As of now, we're having the pandemic, mm -hmm. job-related stress, all this accumulating to a mental health. Mm -hmm. And actually, it was bold enough to be called a pandemic. Mm -hmm. Do you think this mental health is now what is also causing the, you know, the cases and the violence we are seeing? Because mm -hmm. I am depressed and I'm taking it out on someone else. Mm -hmm. Do you think mental health is also a big issue here? A very good question, Sylvie. I'll build up on what Pastor Kostin has said. This thing is wrong. All it's like everything comes into play. Mm -hmm. The social economic part of it. And also, have, like what I can say, and I want to be boldly say that our country is not addressing the problem. It is addressing something called the presenting problem. Mm -hmm. But there are underlying issues. The root cause of this, if a wife was battered or a man was battered, yes. it's not like they started, but it's not a pick and pick. Mm -hmm. It's not a picky picky game. Mm -hmm. There were some underlying issues. Okay, yes, if, yes. if a wife was battered, of course there was, maybe she, she insulted or something. Mm -hmm. I mean, there was something that was happening mm -hmm. in that family. If like a man, like the way you say, um, the, the stereotyping, like, honestly, I tend to think, and I'm saying this without due respect to our men, if it is your wife who is earning more than you, I think it's a mutual, there is that mutual understanding. Mm -hmm. Because we coexist in a family. We cannot, we cannot live like the way our mothers did. My mom was a housewife. Mm -hmm. My dad used to work. My mama, my mom was a housewife. She was going to the, to the shamba and coming back home to take care of the children. But these days, we have career women and we have career men. Mm -hmm. I think we need to come up to a point whereby we have that visual understanding mm -hmm. that I can bring something on board. He, she can also bring, he can also bring something on board and we share as a family. Again, that one is the issue of do we communicate the same? Are we ready to, I mean, the egoistic nature of men, are they able to like remove some heart, you know, some debe, you know, some, some of the things, some of the titles that mm -hmm. is attached to them culturally mm -hmm. and come to understanding. I'm sure we're dealing with COVID-19, which is a pandemic. Yes. And we have already entered to the new normal. We don't have like, the, the, we, I'm not sure that we will ever go back to the normal. Mm -hmm. So we have a new normal that we have adapted. And therefore, we need to come to this understanding that the stresses of due to economic times and the economic strain in our country, it has again escalated a lot of pressure within. Yes. And once you have the pressure within, you will feel like kicking somebody. If I keep on talking, you, you're the man in the house. Mm -hmm. Again, he doesn't have. But he doesn't want to express himself as weak. He wants. He still wants to express himself as that mm -hmm. strong man, mm -hmm. and I'm sure we can have a dialogue in, in families whereby let's understand. I pray just know I'm not working for now. Mm -hmm. I realize there are people who lost their job and they have never told their wife that they lost their job. Just gets out of the house, mm -hmm. runs around, mm -hmm. and you see the pressure is still escalating. 
and that way they are mentally un- unaware that they are having a problem. Okay. And because they are in that state of denial, this c- can never happen. Yeah. So what will come out? He goes there outside, gets one or two, one or two on the, on the load, yes. and then comes out very high. Mm-hmm. And then when you enter the house, there is nothing that has changed. Mm. Your mental status is not okay because if your mental status was was okay, there is that understanding. You you sit and talk a, a, about the issues. Okay. It is true across the job. And Pastor Justin Finn has really explained it very well. We need to work on our skills. We need to be innovative. We need to be creative. We need to look also what are the opportunities around us. Because the person who made this cup mm-hmm. had exposed explored other opportunities, and she came, he or she came up with such a design. Even as with the new normal, for us to be mentally healthy and to function well, mm-hmm. to be able to make sober decisions, mm-hmm. so that we don't have to fight after this. And you know, sometimes when you're fighting a wife, she's also restricting, and they will also there are issues because I mean. Conjugal rights, oh, yes. they will miss. Okay. And again, if a, woman, a man is in, not in their mental state, in their light mental status, when they go down and they are going down mentally, that is why they are picking a very young baby. Have you ever seen somebody mm-hmm. taking a, a three years old? I, I, I don't know the, the smallest was how many months, I don't, I can't remember. And it was very sad. Whereby always when a man is feeling a nudge of pressure within them, they go for a lesser thing. We call it projection. They project mm-hmm. their anger and they project their pain to somebody who is lesser. And mm-hmm. that is where you are getting late to. You hear that somebody, a house girl has been late, a teenager has been late. Mm-hmm. There's so many things. Like I saw another another mm-hmm. report that was raised that a, a chief is a father of so many te- I mean, <laughs> she has he has impregnated so many mm-hmm. teenagers. Mm-hmm. And I was asking myself, a, 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 a chief who is supposed to take care of the community mm-hmm. as a man, you know, is an icon of hope to the community. Yeah. Why go to a very less, I mean, a small girl mm-hmm. and sexually assault them? Yes. That is a, a mental issue. Mm-hmm. And that way, we need to sober up in the church mm-hmm. because our morals, mm-hmm. like the way you said, mm-hmm. our morals have been interfered with. Mm-hmm. And where uh, the Bible says, Psalms chapter 11, verse 3, mm-hmm. in the foundation, mm-hmm. we destroy. Where would the lashes start? That's true. And again, being a Christian media station, we also need to amplify our voice and say mm. that we need to bring back the values, yes. the morality mm. back to mm-hmm. the mm-hmm. families yeah. and the morality back to church. Mm. Whereby we need to ask ourselves, I tend, I this is my start point, that if I am identi- I identify myself as who I am, mm. I am Anastasia. Yes. I am not a lesser gender because of the virtue mm. of the being a male or a female. Mm-hmm. I need to look at myself. Am I what God wants me to be? And that is what we call an identity. I've written a book called The Value of Self-Identity. Yes. If I know who I am in Christ Jesus, and I know my position, I am not fighting. Because again, what is bringing gender-based mm-hmm. violence? Competition. Right. Mm-hmm. Right. I am here to compliment you. Mm-hmm. Why should I fight you? Okay. Just Cynthia, why should I fight you? Yes. Why should your boyfriend fight you? Just because he got a job and he doesn't have. Mm-hmm. I think that is competition as opposed to complimenting one another. Mm-hmm. And that is what, why the gender-based violence is escalating. Because again, I'm still that person who wants to start catching and say, a woman, how is it? Mm-hmm. You know, a woman can never yeah. sat, sit on me. Mm-hmm. But again, time have, have changed. Mm-hmm. It's not about kukaliwa, it's about bringing sense yeah. on the table. Because if we can't bring the sense, mm-hmm. the fact, I mean, we need to address the fact yes. as opposed to addressing the, the norm, I mean, the, the norms that were, that were made, mm-hmm. which are not working now. Mm-hmm. And therefore, we need to ask ourselves, what has gone wrong? Our model of mm-hmm. the loaded. The systems are broken. Yes. yes. A true. broken mm-hmm. system. And then we have a model values that a, a model value system that has lost its structure. Yes. Mm-hmm. It's out of heart. Exactly. Because a, a father sweeping with a, 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 a the, the daughter. The daughter. Even yes. if it's a stepdaughter. Mm-hmm. I'm sure as from my point of view, a husband or a father figure in the house is supposed to be a protector. Yes. Yes. You know, they see a priest in that house. Mm. Again, we call ourselves a, a, a meeting with the church. Where have we gone wrong? The right. priestly role of the 
the father as an identity in the family, mm -hmm. even if you don't have money, you still remain the father. The Tell them, if they, if they ask you for the money for food, mm -hmm. tell them we are going to pray about it. Yes. Because yes. we have a father who here. And right, and I'd like you to hold on to that thought. When we come back after this break, we shall be talking about our children and how we are supposed to raise them. What can we do? Because they are at home, they're watching these reports. Yeah. How can we raise our children when they're at home? Please yeah. do stay with us. We're taking a quick commercial break right here on Daughters of the Kingdom Special Edition. We'll be right back. Right, welcome back to Daughters of the Kingdom Special Edition and thank you for staying with us. Our conversation today on matters gender-based violence and the rising number of murder cases, rape cases mm -hmm. and defilement. And speaking of defilement, our children are at home during this holiday and they're witnessing these reports in media mm -hmm. where, you know, parents are murdering each other, people in relationships and even the sexual coercion you've talked about, Pastor Josephine. Yeah. Uh, recently about 36 teenagers arrested you know with uh, abusive substance in the house they were in i mean what do we do to our children how do we raise them during this time very good sir thank you very much parenting is very essential during this time and you know when god gave the parents the obligation to train their children mm -hmm. that was a timeless that was a timeless obligation. And God is able to really help parents in Proverbs 26, 22 verse 6. Mm -hmm. Train up a child the way he should go. And uh, many parents really have come to a place of feeling like they have given up. They don't know what to do. But God has given us the authority and the power to take care of the, of the children. Let me talk to us, the parents. Mm -hmm. Parenting is a process of supporting mm -hmm. The development of a child mm. from birth mm. to adulthood and that is a responsibility mm. given by God and you know when God gives us a responsibility mm. he gives us the power and the resources to do that work mm -hmm. so in in a few minutes I just want us to talk to the uh, to talk about the development of that parent mm. we have different types of parents mm. and because of not having uh, enough skills you know, enough skills we find some people just let go, others they give up, others they don't know exactly what to do. The children are rising today, I can say it's not like the time when I was growing up. Mm -hmm. As we were, we, we were mentored by everybody in the community. Yeah. When you see a grown up person passing, mm -hmm. you stand up. It you takes give them a village respect. to raise a child. Yeah, it takes a village to raise a child. And everybody who was elder, was given respect mm -hmm. but today when we go to the matatus or mm -hmm. wherever the children is like they um they, they they have the right you know yeah. they, they have the right to do what they want to do but let's talk about the about the parents a psychologist mm -hmm. called us uh, Sinberg, actually a professor i said a good parent help foster empathy honest self-reliance control kindness cooperation and cheerfulness in that child. Listen here. The Bible says in Psalms 127 that children are gift. And we really thank God that God has given this country, Kenya, mm -hmm. so many millions of gifts. Yes. And this is the generation we are raising to serve God and to continue with great work in the future. And these children, because they are gifts, we need to take care of them. Mm -hmm. And that means parents they need to be good models. Mm -hmm. It begins with parents. Uh, we have four types, basic types of parents. Mm -hmm. And I want to speak to us parents. So as we stay with our children in the house, we may really portray, mm -hmm. we may train them to become what God mm -hmm. has, uh, what God has, what God has for them. Mm -hmm. And so that they can attain their destinies. 
the number one parent, the dominant parent, mm. the dictator, the dictator <laughs> kind of parent. Mm. This is a parent who is in control. Mm. And they want their children, when they come into the house, the children is silent, Quiet. sit, don't move, <laughs> don't jump, mm. behave. I mean, they, they have very high, very high standards. They are, they are, they are, they are like police. <laughs> when the parent gets into the house, the children go under the seat or under the bed. And when the parent is out, the children now, they can breathe, yeah. they can celebrate. They feel freedom. They feel like freedom. And because of that, you find the children will hide themselves maybe in the bedroom, mm -hmm. lock themselves there mm -hmm. as long as the parent is in. And whatever they do, wherever they get some legal space or opportunity, mm -hmm. yes. they want to go wild. And this kind of parents, this is the kind of children they bring. They, they, they bring children who don't have because they have not learned relationships. Mm -hmm. They bring up children who are very low esteem mm -hmm. because they have never been told or they have never been encouraged to be themselves. Also, they they rank lowest in class mm -hmm. because there's no motivation mm -hmm. right from home and they make terrible parents mm -hmm. when they grow up. Sure. And that's where you find families who have parents who come from dictatorship kind of families themselves, they are also dictators. Mm -hmm. And their children are harsh mm -hmm. and they are rebellious. Mm -hmm. We have another kind of parents who are negligent. And most of the children we see in the communities now, they come from negligent families. Mm -hmm. And these are pa parents who are very busy. Mm -hmm. It's true we are living in a very competitive yeah. world. And their parents who go the whole day, they are busy throughout the day, throughout the night, live and come back home. They don't have time, work quality. Yeah, yeah. they are work only. Mm -hmm. They don't have time mm -hmm. to be with their children at all. And this this kind of separation is because maybe of divorce, mm -hmm. of separation in the family, mm -hmm. working hours, mm -hmm. and also the increased mobility. Mm -hmm. Right now we have the lockdown a little bit. Actually, one child said, "I can see crazy daddy to nation I have a number." They're not used to this. <laughs> even they were yes. like, oh, "This is how our dad looks like." And even I mean, some of the mm. parents have really neglected mm. their roles. Mm. And the kind of children who come from this family, they are insecure mm. because nobody mm. takes care of them. They're not worth. Mm. They don't feel the worth. They, they break promises yeah. and uh, they are they are predictable children. They can never be you know stable. They are very restless and they have very low expectations. Mm -hmm. Can you imagine that? So the other family is the permissive. Mm -hmm. They are families who are very very permissive. Mm -hmm. Whatever you go, whatever time you come, whatever you do, whatever friends okay. you have, it is okay. Mm -hmm. So you find this type is the type of the children. We are raised by somebody called Eli in the Bible. Mm. Eli was a priest. He was a leader in that mm. time. He was busy in the temple. But he allowed his children to do anything. And he was told by the people around the children are doing A, B, C, D. Mm. But he was like, it's okay. Mm. Ah, if you're just adolescents. You're teenagers. Mm. Now I don't want squeeze it. Eli, he really didn't take up his authority. Mm -hmm. So you find that those kind of children who come mm. from the permissive families, they develop also insecurity yeah. because they don't have barricades. Mm. They they are manipulative. Sure. They will go for what they want, mm. whatever time they want. They want to watch the TV or movie. Mm. They want to go for dance or party the whole week. Mm. The parent will not be mindful. Mm. But we have another character mm. of parents, mm. which is loving and firm. These are parents who are not neither dictators. They just don't want to just this is what you must do and must do. You must be in the house at six. And if it's six or one, go back where you yeah. come from. I mean, but th these are parents who are understanding. They grow together. They walk along. These are parents who will tolerate nonsense. Mm -hmm. Even when the children make mistakes, mm -hmm. they will still tolerate the mistakes and have space and room to show. Mm -hmm. I feel we need as parents during this season of mm -hmm. pandemic, mm -hmm. we have our children more days. That we just had them like 10 months, 10 months. in the house, actually, yes. even yes. longer. Mm -hmm. And even now we have them in the house for seven weeks mm -hmm. in, during this holiday. Mm -hmm. I mean, 
parents, we need to be loving, we need to be accommodative mm -hmm. and listen, not only with the two ears, mm -hmm. see, not only with the two eyes, but with the inner ears. Mm -hmm. What is that child up mm -hmm. to? Mm -hmm. I give them space, listen and talk to them and be loving, mm -hmm. uh, accommodate them, mm -hmm. accommodate their nonsense mm -hmm. and hoil their relationship. Mm -hmm. It is important parents to have that bonding mm -hmm. with, with, their, with their children. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think that, that that is what we can do as parents right now during this season. Mm -hmm. And God told the children of Israel, yes. teach them. Maybe you are bringing up a prodigal and maybe sometimes the children are just different. Mm -hmm. Oil the relationship. Be the number one. Like Job in the Bible. Job used to pray and repent on behalf of his children. And he prayed for them every day. He taught them the word of God mm -hmm. every day. Let me tell you, we can do many things. We can buy the children toys, good clothes, best education, mm -hmm. even taking them to the best of the schools. But as a parent, what best gift you can give to your child it is true, all these other things are important, mm -hmm. but give them the bread of life. Mm -hmm. Teach them the word of God. Mm -hmm. The same way a parent budgets for school fees and for other good uh, entertainment, mm -hmm. budget for things that can develop your child. And even spiritual materials, yes. Bibles, mm -hmm. in books, books, inspirational books, mm -hmm. and even good movies, mm -hmm. it's available. Mm -hmm. We yeah. can budget for that. Mm -hmm. And also having time, walking with them, talking and praying, and even doing some Bible study yeah. together. Even if it's a few minutes mm -hmm. in a day, it makes a difference. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I'd really love to get your counseling point of view. There's this sensitive question on sex mm -hmm. education. Mm -hmm. And a lot of parents mm -hmm. are mm -hmm. afraid, I'd say, for lack of a better word, to address this issue and talk to their children about it. Mm -hmm. I don't know, sex education, when is the right time to talk about this? Is it okay to talk about this with our children? Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. That's a very good question, Cynthia. I want to say that product, production health, mm -hmm. sex education, sexual teaching children about sexual health and productivity, it is supposed, it's a key point that need to be taught from the time they are young. What do I mean by young? Mm -hmm. They are language, there is a language that you can communicate to a one year old, two years old. I mean the childhood, the middle childhood, the late childhood, the teenage mm -hmm. and the adulthood. You keep on unfolding the myth and the taboo that has brought along stigma and that one has really en encouraged the pedophiles, the, the people who abuse the children. Yes. The people who abuse the children, they will always uh, like ask the, the, the if, you know, like now the, the pedophiles, we have the homosexual who are the sodomizing the boys, mm -hmm. and we also have the pedophiles who are heterosexual, they abuse both. So what do they ask a, a, young, a young child? Do you know, have, does your parents talk to you about sex? Mm -hmm. And if they hear that this that is a taboo and it's associated with the stigma in the society, they become an easier target. Mm -hmm. What do they do? They start buying them sweets. They start alluring them in small, small things. Again, as Pastor Justin Fina said, if a child is not affirmed at home, if I am a child, I'm a teenager, I don't get anybody to appreciate who I am. Mm -hmm. Remember, they have a lot of crisis. They are in the state of identity crisis yes. whereby they are wondering, who am I? I have seen myself developing and some parts, you know. Yes. Yeah, I had, uh, like I saw in the social media, somebody say, I heard that when people are teenage, they grow, the hips bloated. <laughs> How comes that mine are not blind? I mean, you know, mm -hmm. and they want to hear that person who is yes. telling them, mm -hmm. you're beautiful, you're loving, you're caring. And some of them, they are not doing it in goodwill. They are doing it as a way of alluring them and then to abuse them, to assault them sexually. And therefore, we as, as, as parents, as she has said, I usually say that in a family, that is the epicenter of a society. Yes. It's a core part of the society because it doesn't matter if you're a single mother, if you're a widow, a widower, or you're a couple, both parents. Mm. It, it takes 
it, it takes a collective responsibility to bring up a child. Yes. And again, ask yourself, as I'm bringing up my child, am I, am I ready? Pastor Josephine, mm -hmm. we have children. I'm yeah. a mother of three. Yes. Uh, will I do this? What will I do this to the community? I remember there is somewhere I work and a young man came and told me, Madam, I want you to look for me sir, for some drugs. And they are, those drugs, they are, they, they are abused. Mm -hmm. And I told him I can never. He asked me why, and that is a lucrative business. I said my value system cannot allow. Cannot allow. I cannot spoil somebody yeah. else's child yeah. at the expense of mine. As mm -hmm. he said, you, you were talking of spoiling us. We are already spoiled. Mm -hmm. It was an eye open and I asked myself, okay, what is the communication that we communicate mm -hmm. from them? at a family level, mm -hmm. what do we tell them? And as Pastor Josephine has said, let's keep on telling them about sexual health, like uh, uh, like the, 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 the people ones, the young ones. Mm -hmm. Let them know, this is my this is my private part, yes. and no one should touch, touch them. Yeah. They, they need to know that breast, they are private part. They need to know they are like a girl needs to know the three parts that are private mm -hmm. to them. And they need to uh, agree that those are private, and it's those private parts. They are not to ashamed them again, but to give them dignity. Mm -hmm. So nobody to, to, should touch their breasts. Nobody should touch their private parts. And even now, for the boys, because of the sodomized being sodomized, they need to know that nobody should put something behind my back. It is used, and then explain to them that that part, the anus, it's supposed to fall for excreting the, 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 the waste. Because if, and then they need to know that nobody should insert an object. Mm -hmm. A human object should not be inserted there because that is how they're being assaulted. Mm -hmm. And therefore we need to ask ourselves, is it okay to discuss about sex in the family? Mm -hmm. Yes, it's very much okay. How? We keep on unfolding. The information is, you don't give the information. Unfortunately, I saw another another trading message and this was for two i'll do it in a brief this was for two professionals mm -hmm. they, they 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 got they were professionals they were doctors at a very young age they they, they got married at 24 23 there mm -hmm. at the prime age and they give birth to two beautiful children a boy and a girl but they were very busy building their career and building money again the socioeconomic part of it mm -hmm. and as they continue building the money and the car and all that this is what happened they left their baby with the house girl, and then they say, because you're very busy, let's bring along a, a relative, a, a young man, a relative, I think it was a, a, a new law or somebody. You see those things that are happening, and that is how we are getting to get incest in the family, yes. we are getting to get those things. And the, 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 the house girl and the, 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 the in-law, they were watching pornography. And one time their mother came back and found them naked, like naked completely, they were watching pornography, as they were still practicing and the children the young children were seeing it was a shock on them yes. but because of their career and the image that they want to protect they hide it they hate it they never addressed it they never looked like for a country or somebody to take care of it so mm -hmm. there it was another cover they chased the boy and chased the house gun but did they deal with the problem no, no so not. the two and the boy was asking mom why are you chasing the boy uh, our auntie and the uncle and they're treating us out to become good father and a good mother mm -hmm. what was happening with the mother and the father when they come in because they're very tired and they don't want the hectic of being disturbed by the children mm -hmm. they used to go to their bedroom with their laptop and t i mean you know you want to extend work home and this is what happened they want. They were very curious. What is happening in the bedroom? Mm -hmm. And this is what happened. The kids. They learned. They became promiscuous at a very tender stage. And at teenage, they were pregnant twice. What happened to the parents again? You remember what David said, mm -hmm. covering the sin, covering mm -hmm. the sin. Mm -hmm. So the girl underwent an abortion. The first one. The second one. Again, the news are happening. I'm pregnant again. Mm -hmm. What do I do? Again, they procured an abortion, and the girl never survived. And because they had this attachment, promiscuous attachment with the, the brother, the brother committed suicide. Mm -hmm. This story was being given by a mother, but now she was a, a, an old lady of 74 years. Mm -hmm. And she was saying, after that, the man developed, she be, he became depressed, right. he, and then he died out of depression. Mm -hmm. And the mother was saying, I'm a widow with nothing. I had a career that was guarding, safeguarding. Yes. 
I had a family that I neglected. I thought money could work. Mm -hmm. And it was an advice, and I, I, I took that advice. It was a personal advice. Yes. And I'm saying we could also take this. What is it that is happening out of our camel? As you know, out of the way, Pastor Jesse has said, mm -hmm. we need to see with our ears. We need to listen with our ears and our eyes open. And again, deeper within us, also to pray for them. And to pray for them that God may plant the seed of God within them that is incorruptible. Yes. Because the enemy is out there to destroy them. Mm -hmm. Remember, these threads of whatever is happening in the social media, and I'm not saying it's bad because it's in the information. Mm -hmm. We're in the information stage, mm -hmm. whereby whatever my daughter is yeah. watching when I'm here, mm -hmm. I have no control. Mm -hmm. But again, you just talk to them the way you said, we need to, like, we must interact with them freely. We need to enter to their world. There are no two ways. Yes. And by entering to their world, let them keep on talking to us. Like I remember my daughter after they crossed school, mm -hmm. she came and told me, Mom, uh, they went back to on January. I haven't gotten parents since January. So we are in March. Mm -hmm. So she was wondering in February I never got parents. Three months. I never got shot. I asked her, Have you had something on us? Have you had any sexual interaction yeah. or something? Mm -hmm. Say, Mom, no. Mm -hmm. So I told her, it's okay. Sometimes due to change of climate, she's mm -hmm. schooling outside Nairobi away. Mm -hmm. So I told her sometimes out of the change of climate, and then your body's still developing. Mm -hmm. And true to my words, after we talked, after some time, they said, just relax. And mm -hmm. I bought her pads and I told her, just relax, you'll be okay. The following week, she got her menses. Yeah. She got her month repeated. Why? Because we need to talk about it. Let, let them know that it's okay to be mm -hmm. friends with boys. Mm -hmm. But again, your private dignity, your dignity mm -hmm. needs not to be interfered with. So it's very much okay to talk about. I dealt with a case of uh, a stepfather. Mm -hmm. And this girl, the stepfather, was sexually assaulting the girl frequently. Mm -hmm. And I went and had a talk in, in one of the school. And having a talk in the one of the school, the girl listened, and she heard that it was not okay for her father to abuse her. Yes. And she left the house and went to her auntie. The following day, the father and the mother came looking for the girl. It's cool. And the girl came boldly with the aunt, and she said, I cannot study it again. Daddy, you've been sexually assaulted, assaulting me, and I'm not ready to see. That is how the girl was rescued. Again, we need to relay this information. Let them know. I mean, why should you interview with somebody? Again, in schools, we need to be very careful then with our boys. There is a lot of bullying. And again, there is also a, a lot of cyber bullying, whereby somebody takes your photo, Snapchat, or they threaten you to take a Snapchat of your photo when you're naked, and they start trading with it and uh, as i mean sexually also abusing you because when somebody is trading with your photo when somebody has scared you and said send my photo mm -hmm. send me a photo when you're naked yes. or like, i i am going to kill you that is again is cyber bullying we need to communicate to it to our children, children and, let them, and let them know that it's not always good mm -hmm. to to post your videos and yes. your photos on there because somebody out of marriage we are living in a general i mean we're living in times that people are Mauritians. Mm -hmm. again as christian as a mother as a christian we also need to pray cover our children because we don't know the demon is talking them yes. he's attacking mm -hmm. them he's out to destroy our generation mm -hmm. because the bible says that the generation of Alashias, it shall be great and mighty. Again, personally, even if I'm a psychologist, I will never divorce the word of God from my career. Yes, yes. Why? Because it gives me the foundation. Because if it is God who is taking care of the, these children, again, we have, again, I still say, if God built in them a seed, you know, you plant a seed that cannot be incorrupted you are for sure that your children are seen as if you've been consequent i mean if you've been frequently leading the bible study you know you have planted a seed in your children yes. i've been even when i'm not there i know i may not have bought big houses mm -hmm. and big cars which they are very important but have you laid a foundation a base for them to be able to stand out in the society right and even as we do conclude this discussion I'd really love to get practical. Mm -hmm. I'm assuming I have a friend who approaches me and tells me, you know, I'm going through this and, and I don't know what to do. 
and she has the fear of coming out mm -hmm. or even walking to a, a rescue center or mm -hmm. even a psychological center. Mm -hmm. What is it that I can tell her or him to be able to, you know, help? Mm -hmm. For for the for the for the people who've gone through it, or somebody and or somebody is threatening you, we have very nice. I mean, our it's only that people are not aware. But when you go report that somebody is either stalking you, somebody is abusing you, or somebody is threatening you, mm -hmm. when you go report, that person is also traced, mm -hmm. and they can be even be they can be jailed. Mm -hmm. So there are those. I mean, the government has taken care of the, that those things. Unfortunately, I want to speak this with all due diligence to our police and to our chiefs and to the people who are in authority who are supposed mm -hmm. to take care of our children. Please, mm -hmm. let's again not insult them. Mm -hmm. You know, assault them. You know, when I come to you, mm -hmm. I am somebody, when I come to you, when I have gone through late, you need to tell them the right structure. When when you have gone through late, you have 72 years of securing your, 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 yourself back. 72 hours. Yes, hours, yeah. 72 hours. And after you, you go through a lab, please don't change the clothing mm -hmm. because of the evidence. Again, there are those cements, the, the specimen they take. In the hospital, they'll take those specimens. Mm -hmm. They'll also be able to know the magnitude of that. Uh, sometimes there is bloodshed. Yeah. Sometimes th those ones don't. And then don't cover the clothes with a paper, an iron paper bag. Because when you cover with an iron paper bag, it is wet and the evidence is distorted. Yes. So go as you are to the hospital. Let's break this stigma mm -hmm. that somebody is assaulting me, whether I, 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 I mean, whether a boyfriend, if it's a lady, it's a lady. Mm -hmm. If it's a boyfriend, date lady, if it's a, it's a police, if it is a stepfather, mm -hmm. please go report. And the best part to report, after you go to the police, you report, then immediately go to the hospital mm -hmm. because when you are before those that that time we call it, we call it the widow period. Mm -hmm. Before the widow period is over, you can be rescued. I remember I dealt with one girl in one of the school, and this girl, she was going to school. Mm -hmm. She she was in a day school, and as she was going to the school, she was carjacked. And the next minute she found herself in Kajiab. The next minute she found herself in TZ, mm -hmm. and they were rocked in a forest. They entered in a forest, and in the forest. There are people who are gang rapists. Mm -hmm. And she told me she stayed there for a week. Nobody was tracing them. But the girl had put her phone. You know the the mm -hmm. the 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 the, 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 the shots that have yes. a, a pocket. pocket. And immediately she realized that we have been gang raped. She sent a message. And the message hung in the air because again the, the phone was taken away. Mm -hmm. The message hung in the air, and after hanging in the air, it dropped. And there, the, the parents were able to track her. Do you know what was happening in that case? They were being raped continuously. The good part is the third year, she was, the third day, she was traced. She was taken to the nearby hospital. Mm -hmm. She was taken care of. She was, she went through the, those mm -hmm. procedures. You know, there are those procedures even to take care of her, not to get HIV positive. Mm -hmm. And I want to say, if the parents could have kept quiet. Mm -hmm. Okay, the stigma was there. But I'm saying the first aid part of it. The widow period, we need to take care of it because after the widow period and the hospitals, Mama Rusi, the Nairobi Hospital, I mean the Nairobi Women's Hospital, even the normal county government hospitals, mm -hmm. they will take care of us. Right, they need so, to know the situation can yeah. be salvaged. Mm -hmm. And then there are numbers that people call, I can't remember, it's 9 11 or 6 11. Mm -hmm. There are numbers that you can call and be rescued. Yes. So don't die alone. And again, as you have said, please look for somebody that you can. Air your, I mean, to. talk to me. Yes. I mean, vent out. You know, when you stay with it, it's not. It's doing you harm than good. And again, it's also going to affect you mentally. Yes. So talk to someone. Right. I mean, look, and that is why we said we need to get avenues whereby uh, we can get a free talk with these girls, with these men. Let them know it's okay not to be okay. And when you're not okay, you can have a shoulder to lean on. But again, my question is: Are you a shoulder for someone to lean on? Good question. Pastor Josephine, in a few seconds, what can the church do to help this crisis, during this crisis? Thank you very much. I think the church, we have a very, we have the mandate to restore the broken value systems. We need to really bring back values from the family. Mm -hmm. Every family should be in a position to build a family culture. Yeah. 
And that is culture which is respectful, culture which is honoring, honoring one another, respecting one another, even the relationships in the family, father, mother, and the children. There should be a strong relationship, respect for one another. That is very mm -hmm. important. Mm -hmm. And when the family unit is strong, it will also be uh, seen in the in the community. The other fabrics will be will be strengthened. So we need to strengthen the family unit. That is very important. Mm -hmm. The other thing which is very, very important, mm -hmm. it is to restore the unity which is broken. You know, once somebody is offended, the simple offenses, one of the reasons why people are running away from mm -hmm. home mm -hmm. and they go get even some of these dangerous people out there, mm -hmm. both men and women, mm -hmm. is because of the, the, the breaking of unity. Mm -hmm. We need to bring back unity. Right. And I talk to so many young people and even parents who have run away, young men and young women who have run away from their homes, kindly get back, honor your parents. It all begins mm -hmm. from there. Right. And I believe God is going to help us. This, this monster mm -hmm. of gender violence, mm -hmm. if everybody takes responsibility, sure. the young, the older, mm -hmm. the parents, mm -hmm. the government, sure. and everybody takes responsibility. Mm -hmm. right. We can bring it down mm -hmm. and God is going to be glorified. Absolutely. Thank you. Now, gender-based violence is a collective responsibility that each and every person should adhere to. Now, if you know someone who knows someone who knows someone who is going through this, of course, they can reach out to the toll-free line 1195 and talk to someone. It does not always have to end badly. We can always talk to someone and be able to help each other. Now, remember, the conversation does not have to end here. Keep on sending your SMSs through our number 23993 or on Twitter at TV or Instagram at TV underscore EBN. And let's keep the conversation going. This has been Daughters of the Kingdom special edition on matters gender-based violence. Thank you and have a good day.